What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spider Hands, and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Paul7931 as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track from an act named Urizen Society titled Coagula, and we're going to listen through it from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. What do we have? I like the music box with the little dings of the bells, man. I mean, like, what a turn, right? Well done, Paul. <laughs> you got me with that one. Dude, it's brutal, man. What I like about this is that it's very dramatic and theatrical. You have the music box and the bells at the start, and then we clearly have the growls and the screams and everything like metal components there. But we are making it more of sort of like a theater performance there by the changes in tempo and time signature here, really sort of like emphasizing Aphrodite and like coagular parts there and stuff like that. I'm a little bit unfamiliar with the lore of this, but I'm keen to hear more. It's incredibly fascinating, though. Hang on, on the silver. It's visceral, man. Wait, what happened? That got me a little bit. I was thinking, what's happening here? Is this in different parts? Dude, this is so next level. And the strings, dude. What I like about this is that it's a reiteration of that initial sort of like symphonic theme with the strings at the start there, but they've made it so demented with the way that they're harmonizing. It's, it's very cool. Oh, 
So, like, am I to understand this is about, like, this is about sirens in the ocean and, like, a spirit that was born out of the mammal that died in the ocean and it's humans interacting it and humans are responsible for killing it. So there's, like, a sense of this being, like, revenge or something like that and the sirens are involved with it. To fully commit to the ocean like that. Yeah. So is it like a, a sense of act of revenge on the fact that the sailors, you know, like did this stuff to the woman? The the vo the lyrics are absolutely insane, and I mean that in the best possible way. It's so, so interesting to like listen to and read this. I I haven't really heard storytelling like this in quite a while. I think Greek mythology is real. Like I, I don't know if you've read the Odyssey. If you're watching this, I would recommend it if you if you haven't. Wow. Though. Like, why are there lock holes? But it just stops and comes down with strings and woodwinds. And my camera's going off. I'm gonna have to change the battery in a moment. Wow, okay. Let's uh, talk about this track more in a conclusion. I have a lot to say about it. I, I, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty positive. Because welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an ex named Urizen Society Total Coagula. Now, please ignore this. It's just because I've been recording for a while. It's it's just a little thing. Just I know it's probably going to annoy some people, but like, just in case, you know. So what is this review about? Uh, what is this track about? I think it's about Greek mythology, stuff to do with like the sailors and like... I don't know if I can say the word, uh, the R word on YouTube without it causing issues. Doing stuff against the, the, the woman's will, basically. The sailors were awful people and they did some terrible things. And I think what happened is that the sirens and like the whales and stuff like that was like a sort of a revenge for that. Maybe they did something to cause the whale to appear that spirit as like an act of revenge. And then eventually what happened was is that they, they ended up somehow getting close to the mother of all and seeing her in the temple and maybe they died and they went to that part there and that was their like re either redemption or their judgment at that point i'm not sure but either way i think i'd need another few times with this to really get the hang of it but nonetheless it was fascinating like i i just the talk of the griffins and everything like that and the flaming swords this and so much vivid imagery within this there's just so much to absorb and i i love it to pieces it's just so huge. The storytelling is phenomenal there. It's some of the best storytelling I've heard in a track in quite a while there. It's so creative. I thank you as well for making it in English. I understand these guys are, uh, as I understand, like a Chinese act. Um, but having the music and uh, having the lyrics in English makes it a lot easier for people like me to understand. So I appreciate it sincerely. I think that the vocal performances in this were solid. I think that the words came through clearly, whether they were sort of like the no, 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 the kind of spoken kind of hardcore style or like you've got the shouts or the shrieks or like the growls with whether whichever way we did it the words came through clearly for the most part and i think that ultimately it was very authentic for the genre it it, it el clearly illustrated and invoked the intensity the aggression the fury of the situation there just had the atrocity of it i think it was it was the right thing to do here it's been, not just for the genre but just as a just as just an actual implementation and performance thing i think that 
we we didn't really try to be too melodic with it which i think was a smart idea because there was so much going on with the guitars the different string sections and woodwinds and stuff like that with the bass and drums as well uh, ultimately that's all we needed so i think the vocals are incredibly well handled the track itself at 646 is one of the most interesting pieces of music i've reviewed in terms of structure as well it's more like an opera where you have Again, you have strings and you have guitars and bass and drums, but not all the time. You have moments where things are kind of like low-key, like we had the music box with the little bells at the start. Then we have drums and guitar and bass, you know, it just comes in like that. And there's like several different points where things get really heavy and intense. And then there'll be like a pause, like at the end of like the second section where like you have these kind of uncomfortable sort of string, like flat second harmonies come in and kind of show how sort of mutated and grotesque the situation is before going back into more sort of growlies, more kind of tremolo pick guitar parts there, the bass and drums. I think we might've also had like a choir vocals at some point as well, if I'm not mistaken there to be fair, but it was just so much to absorb in one take. It's, it's a luxurious, piece of music and i think they ought to begin to prepare themselves for just being able to structure it like this with the vocals and performance let alone the extra instrumental performances because if i talk about a few of the instruments i really appreciate i think again the music box at the start was very like intriguing it was like oh we have this tone it's pretty there's some interesting arpeggios and melodic ideas going on here it illustrates some of the harmonies we have later on really neatly it establishes a motif there with the bells as like occasional accents and then you've got that iteration of that where with the within the, the production instantly as well was tight you know you could just hear it clearly you know as easy to sort of like get what was going on but then we also had the guitars like later on that came in and the guitars were ferocious where they were kind of like power chordal parts or like tremolo picked kind of like lead elements there they're all either sub layers or layers there decorating the piece almost like a four behind the the vocal parts there the drums were ferocious there we had some really we had a great tone to the kit and these like fast sort of snare sort of tom full patterns there with the the variations in tempo and time the time signature with the aphrodite coagula parts there were just monstrous like they were so effective they, they stopped it they were like oh this is a new thing now it split it up really effectively without it feeling awkward that the time signature has, has changed because you can't always expect that to occur right and so the drums were really fluid and well played throughout there they synced really well what was going on with the guitar especially as the guitar was not doing a consistent thing a lot of the time there were variations and sort of like uh intrusions at, at certain points which might not necessarily be typical and i think that in addition to that the bass guitar and the low end sort of supporting the quite complicated melodies and harmonies within corporations and stuff like that even working with like the flat seconds of the strings and that's that second half where incredibly um they're incredibly supportive and, and sort of like uh they, they worked really well on the low end there and i think that they were really important to kind of evoke again that sense of heaviness for the piece there they didn't wouldn't have worked so well with the start with the music box which is why they came in in that later half with the with the guitars and drums and it was it was dope man the strings as well the way they flooded around the stereo field at some points they were colorful invoking sort of major minor triads there in the second half a second bit there in the second act they they were a bit more sort of like again they had the flat seconds are a bit gross sounding they mirrored or tried to sort of like tell you what was going on in the first part but in a way where it was like a little bit kind of more desiccated and a little bit sort of like uncertain and disturbing and i think that was a really cool design there just to show a change in the story that's going on there and then at the end you just have like these kind of quiet woodwinds and strings there with a phenomenal sense of dynamic range there that's very 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 interesting and just ultimately yeah we we create we created this really unique composition that i think cap is encapsulates what they're trying to discuss in a way that's very much fitting for the grandiose nature of the tale and it it's metal and it works with again it works in part with the vocal style which is very kind of harsh and like intense and confrontational because of the fact that there's less melody with the vocals the rest of the instruments kind of stand out and have plenty of room to do their thing on, on side of it i don't think a lack of any specific solo parts aside from the the main vocal leads i mean there might have been a solo section if i'm not mistaken but like i they're de de definitely the vocals for the most part with the focal point and ultimately it was a note where the performance was really really incredibly tight and i don't think it was a note out of place but it's also just the overall theme here as one of trying to be so sort of like very kind of like it's huge sounding you got the strings you got a symphonic performance there it's very dramatic and kind of like um it's like you're there watching a live show in front of you that you can kind of imagine what they're discussing incredibly like easily and it's just i think it's the instruments that make it sound so 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 massive 
it's 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 very much like again operatic theater kind of drama kind of stuff there where i think if they just had the guitars bass and drums it would have been a little bit too sort of like a little bit too sort of like uh it would have been great to listen to but it just adds a bit of extra kind of like um glow it adds an extra amount of sophistication to it that uh makes it um seem like it's a larger life experience there it's just it's just a combination of those elements combined with the uh intricacy of the various movements we have the non-typical uh changes between the time signatures and tempos and stuff like that the through composed core of it and the various act sections there with distinct kind of um, ideas and concepts was creating uh, continuing with a similar theme it's just dope it's really well handled really well written track very difficult to write music like this but they did an incredible job of it and uh, finally the studio recording mixing and mastering oh it's just top notch man like the vocals the guitars bass drums the music boxes and the bells at the start with the strings and the woodwinds were all handled really really efficiently there um nicely niched in the frequency spectrum with no weird resonant frequencies nice and wide did i say stereo field frequency spectrum stereo field things surrounded you in the headphones man they were nice and wide in the stereo field F phenomenal amount of depth i know you were surrounded by the music incredible amount of dynamic range things were not the same loudness the whole time there's lots of variety there which makes sense for performance sometimes it was just quiet it was a pause you didn't know what was happening next it was a lot of fun and it's compelling and some parts were like the, the lyrics they just they made you feel things you you just you were invested from the start and finally, this you know, it was nice and loud without pumping, so the bus compression and limiting was handled. Effectively, this is an incredible piece of music. Um, Arisen Society should be incredibly proud of themselves. And this is my review of their track, Tata Coagula, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show them some love via their various social medias and their YouTube page. And stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. It's here to help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world. And I will catch you in the next SC Patience video. Spider Hands out.